Alright, this is for E4, E5 lovers and those who find the Royal Pace or the Spanish opening to be very difficult to fight against. So I want to suggest a very simple counter gambit that you can use against the Royal Pace, which is characterized by the following moves. E4, E5, Knight F3, Knight C6 and then white plays bishop b5. Normally black players play pawn to a6 or knight to f6 in this position. On the other hand, white has this annoying move pawn to d4 which aims at destroying black's center. And so this is the major problem to do with the royal pace. And it's not that easy to crack down if you're playing black pieces. So the move that I recommend in this position instead of going a6 or knight to f6 is pawn to f5 which has a new name by the way called the Schliemann defense but formerly known as the Janish Gambit. So we are going to look at four common lines beginning with e takes f5 then followed by bishop takes c6 then pawn to d3 and finally knight to c3 which is a top played move in the master's database like what people play in real tournaments. So the whole purpose of pawn to f5 by the way is to simply take on e4 given a chance but at times you are going to see most of your opponents taking this pawn after which I recommend you just go pawn to e4 attacking this knight. Now seeing this white may either play queen a2 or simply take your knight on c6. So let's start with queen e2 this is what they like doing pinning the pawn to the king. Well after this I suggest you go queen e7 why because you're simply unpinning your pawn in a defensive way so you want to meet your opponent's queen with your queen not your knight or another pawn. There is no any better square where that knight can go to right. If knight g1 just know that this is a sheer waste of time and you're likely to win the game very fast. Beginning with the move knight d4 double attacking the queen and the bishop if something like queen c4 or whatever yes taking the light squared bishop is okay but speaking of strategies what strong players do is creating more chances to attack given an opportunity. So queen e5 makes a lot of sense because it gives white more room to error and looks like the light squad bishop is trapped by the way. So on the next move you're just going to win that free bishop. So that's the beauty of always looking for strategic moves. And that's one little trap in the Janish gambit if white chooses to go that direction. So because of that you will see most of your opponents taking your knight on c6 and as a rule of thumb in the Janish gambit you are supposed to take with your b pawn. So b takes c6 is a very decent move. In fact this is what I highly recommend but again you are not limited to what you can do. d takes c6 is not much of a stretch. If something like knight d4 again you are not limited to what you can do so you don't have to memorize moves. You can play queen e5 if you want or just develop a piece in a way of attacking the f5 pawn. So this is okay if pawn to d3 now bishop takes h6 would be very bad for us. So this is the right time to take back our pawn and after knight takes you take back with your bishop and after de think about this which piece would you take with on e4. This is one position that you are going to see from time to time in the Janish gambit and so you need to master it. Always remember to take back with your queen to simplify the game. Kiss keep it so simple. After queen takes you take back with your bishop and stockfish thinks this is only better for black. One you are ahead in development. Two you have a bishop pair. Three bishop takes e4 comes with an attack as you can see already. Either the g2 pawn or the c2 pawn will be a goner. If castle short is played you can simply take the pawn on c2 and you are simply up a pawn. If rookie one check you always have king d7 with no problems at all. Rookie two for example just retreat your light squad bishop and next you're going to develop your dark squad bishop and release your a rook. And because of this pawn structure on the queen side we always want to castle long given an opportunity. How easy is that guys? Is this the royal pace that you always have difficulties cracking down? I mean back to the typical royal pace opening position where white plays bishop b5 expecting you to go f6 or knight to f6. Once again just go pawn to f5. By the way this reminds me of the game that was played in 2019 in St. Louis between Fabiano Caruana and Magnus Carlsen. Magnus Carlsen had black pieces and he played this same defense against Fabiano Caruana and guess what guys? <laughs> he, 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 he lost. 
Okay, now I know what you think. He did not lose because of the opening. Just his 99% tactics, you guys. Mm, so, uh, everyone loses. But that doesn't make this to be a bad defense. Just a little joke, by the way. There are so many games in the Masters database with positive results. Anyway, we just finished looking at what to do against e takes a5 once again you just push point to e4 and chess will begin playing itself so instead of e takes a5 what if black plays bishop takes c6 right away well once again you are always at liberty of taking back with your b pawn that's the typical line in the Janish gambit because next you want to play pawn to d5 and then fix your pawn structure like this indirectly developing your last squad bishop as well but if you like castling long like me, just go with d takes c6, giving white another puzzle. Knight takes e5 is the top played move here, but almost in every ruler pace position, whenever knight takes e5 happens, the move that we always think of is queen d4, because that attacks the pawn on e4 and the knight on e5. Nothing strange about this move. There's this little trap that you need to know in this line, you guys, where black plays the top played move, queen h5 check because their knight is on e5 i mean this is a very common combo because white thinks you can't play pawn to g6 because your rook is gonna hang somehow after knight takes g6 but they forget that after hg your queen on d4 is indirectly protecting your rook on h8 so black can't take the rook <laughs> so they end up taking the pawn on g6 with check desperately of course after which you can go king d8 and so they're going to play pawn to d3 paving way for their dark squared bishop they want to give a check but just continue doing your thing as if you're attacking the queen and bishop g5 is the top played move just spinning the knight to the king but you know what there's another tactic here which most of your opponents are going to miss just take the pawn on b2 for free because next you want to take the free rook on a1 so they are going to play the top played move again bishop f6 which looks wonderful at first sight because white is attacking your queen and the rook on h8 but you can simply go queen c1 check and on the next move grab their free rook on h1 next you are going to play rook h6 rescuing your rook Oh, is that rook for free? No, because white's queen is hanging. So these are some of the things that most of your opponents are not going to see, especially in this specific line, you guys. This is a very wonderful line to master. Anyway, let's look at something else that white can do. Enough of bishop takes c6. Now we look at the d3 line. So again, this is the Janish gambit initial position where we play pawn to f5 as a response to the ruler pace. Anyways, instead of e takes a5 or bishop takes c6, what if white plays pawn to d3, what do you do? Now this is one common line that you're going to face a lot of times you guys and you need to master this. First of all, remember that the purpose of pawn to f5 is to take on e4 given a chance and this is the ideal situation. You always want to take on e4, that's the main line whether you like it or not. But there's one beautiful trap that I want to show you which works especially in blitz and rapid even in bullet beginning with the move bishop c5 this is a blitz move you guys not objectively the best the idea is that we want to allow white to take our knight on c6 since it's the only piece that is guarding the e5 pawn so you're going to see your opponents taking this knight and after pawn takes they'll be glad to take on e5 i mean this is what most beginners and intermediate level players play but after this even though you can go bishop takes f2 check and after king takes you win back the knight like this you can just go queen d4 immediately threatening to mate on f2 right away but what do we see in the leeches database again the top played move is queen h5 check look at this because this is a common combo that i spoke about a few minutes ago where white thinks if you play pawn to g6 they can just take that pawn because you can't take they'll take your rook well the thing is you can still take even here because your rook on h8 is defended by your queen on d4 and this is one thing they will not see i promise so after queen takes g6 check once again you just go king d8 and after bishop g5 check the top played move remember what we did we blocked this check with our knight cause 
somehow we are attacking this queen i mean suppose we move our king right if pawn to c3 we're just going to take on f2 with check same with bishop f6 by the way we're just going to do this and after king d1 we don't worry about our rook on h8 remember what happened last time we can just take on e4 if bishop takes h8 they always forget that their queen is under attack <laughs> so that's another similar trap that you're going to see in this line but anyways it's not every time you're going to see white taking the rook on h8 they play something like pawn to d4 but you can just take if you want because after all white can't take your bishop because of knight takes queen right you have so many things to do bishop f5 by the way is also playable or even pawn to e3 if rook e1 you go bishop f5 attacking the queen if they take your knight with check you just take back with your bishop there's no more checks for white and on the next move you're just going to win like this we just finished looking at the pawn to d3 line we also looked at e takes a5 and bishop takes c6 so what if white plays knight c3 this time once again the purpose of pawn to f5 remember is to simply take on e4 given a chance and this is the chance that we're talking about if knight takes e4 you simply go knight to f6 remember this structure this is what you're going to be playing under normal circumstances and if knight takes you simply take back with your queen right your queen is very safe here if castle short the ideal place for your bishop is e7 you develop your bishop on e7 and castle short you put your king on h8 later on life goes on by the way pawn to d5 is always on the plate in the near future after you castle short again instead of playing bishop e7 which is the main theoretical line you can also consider bishop c5 which comes with a little sneaky surprise guys this is full of traps again not objectively the best but watch if bishop takes c6 the top plate move you simply take back with your d pawn right and here white would think yes i can take the free pawn on e5 because if queen takes back i have rook e1 now that is white saying because they think they are pinning your queen to the king right but this is not true because there is one annoying move that they always foresee bishop takes f2 check if king f1 or king h1 we simply take the rook on e1 with our bishop so they'll just take your bishop after which you unpin your queen this way and this comes with check ladies and gentlemen after something like king g1 it's up to you to go queen d4 if you want but the move that i like is queen f6 because i'm giving white one more chance to blunder with something like rook f1 see what happens ladies and gentlemen i just go queen d4 check and after king h1 see this move bishop g4 and even if they play rook takes f8 check i just take back with my rook and see how cheeky i become you guys if white plays rook e1 i just play rook e5 so this is just a little deflection where we sacrifice our queen so that we can you know mate white in that style this is just a simple trick if white doesn't fall for this and let's say they go king g1 well i can simply see queen e2 right away so that on the next move i just pin white's queen to the king and here white should resign anyway so i just wanted to show you an example of how your games will be going with the janish gambit and i hope you guys really enjoyed this study if you did consider liking this video and subscribe to my channel if you are new and if you want to take your chairs seriously check out my courses at www.casperchairs.com i highly recommend that you get my gyoko pianissimo course if you are a beginner or an intermediate level player and just for disclosure the complete version of this video can be found on my patreon page that is for those who really want to learn this beautiful defense or gambit 